All right, everyone, welcome in to another uh, War Champ one-on-one. Um, I'm with uh, really the best Florida State golfer that's ever lived, uh, John Pock. Uh, I know that's a weird thing to hear, but when you look at what he's accomplished at Florida State, nobody has more or had a better scoring average than this guy. He is currently ranked the number one player in the country. Um, he's a senior. He's still in school, which I want to ask about because I think maybe a lot of people might have left a little early. John, how are you doing? Thanks for uh, Thanks for being on with us. Yeah, I'm doing great, Corey. Thanks for having me out here. I mean, I'm actually uh, in Juneau Beach, Florida right now getting ready for the Walker Cup, but, you know, always have time for, you know, anyone seminal related. Good. Well, that's good to hear. And the Walker Cup is the the amateur amateur tour. Is it like a Ryder Cup for amateurs? Exactly. Yeah, that's basically it. You know, you got the best 10 Americans and best 10 Great Britain and Irish players and, you know, just go head to head in the little Ryder Cup format. John, I wanted to ask you before we get started on, uh, you know, your accomplishments at Florida State. Why are you still at Florida State? Because you were a very accomplished golfer last year. A lot of players do leave after their second or third year. Most, I would think, accomplished as you are. Why did you come back for uh, for your senior year? I think the biggest thing was Coach Jones and and my teammates. You know, I've I've made a commitment since I got here to stay for four years, and you know, it's it's been. Florida State has given me some of the best experiences of my life and you know I I've I feel like my life has been all Florida State since you know I got to college and it, you know it really has been and you know coach Jones has done so much for me the whole entire program has done so much for me and I just feel like you know I just owe it to them to stay for 4 years and you know do everything I can to help this team win a national championship but you, but you see that life Style. We all see it. I mean, I, I can't imagine what it's like to be you to know that that's very, very possible to go be a PGA Tour professional. And the, well, the money, the the friends, the locations, the life, the private planes. I see it all on Instagram because Brooks Kepka tweets it or Instagrams it. So you see that lifestyle. And how hard is it to not want to go jump on it immediately? How hard is it to stay patient and not and not go pursue that as as quickly as you can? You know, I. I feel like that stuff is all great and all, but there's just, I feel like college is such an awesome experience that, you know, I've just met some of my closest friends, you know, people I call my, call them my family. And, you know, I, I just, I really love Tallahassee. I love Florida state. You know, I just, I've had nothing but good experiences since I've been here. And, you know, I, I understand that turning pros exciting and flashy and, you know, there's a lot of money out there, but, you know, I feel like I've had such a great experience. Yeah, I wanted to stay here for four years. When did you when did you start playing golf? Were you two? Were you four? Was it when you when you could start walking? When did you start playing? So I, I picked it up when I was seven years old. My oldest brother is um, maybe six years old, is nine years older than me. And he picked it up when he was 15. And I just kind of tagged along and, you know. Um, I started to get kind of good and, you know, I just, that's when, you know, I thought I could kind of pursue this in the future. When did you, when, when you say kind of good, how good were you and how, how long did it take before you were like, were you like the best eight year old around the best nine year old no, around? No, was it that quickly it, that you, oh, okay. It, it kind of hit. So uh, I still remember when I was nine years old, I was playing a bunch of us kids events and was shooting in nine holes mid 50s low 60s I wasn't very good and then you know I kept grinding and practicing a lot and when I hit about 12 to 13 years old I, I think when I was 13 I won like I came in second in like some national event the U.S. Kids Teen World Championship and I was like you know I kind of competing against some of the best you know 12 13 year olds in the country so you know maybe I could I should try pursue this and you know I was competing against some of the best ever since and I feel like that's kind of when I I knew I was good enough to do this when you're 12 and you're good how, I just kind of trying to get in the mind of a 12 or a 13 early teen really good golfer like when you go to the course are you will you take 500 balls and just chip for an entire day like or do you just want to play rounds like you can't get good by just playing rounds though right you've got to put in the practice work how hard is that for a 12 year old to do? And how much did you do stuff like that? Yeah, you know, I, I have a, my dad to thank a lot for that because, you know, if you told me without my dad to go hit a thousand golf balls, there's just, there's just no way I'd ever do that. But my dad, you know, he really pushed me, you know, it's, 
he, he wanted what's best for me. And when I was about from the ages from like nine to 15, every weekend I would hit 900 golf balls Saturday and Sunday. There was a range up in, you know, North Jersey that I would drive out to. And in the winter times, I can't do anything but hit golf balls. So I'd, I would hit 900 golf balls every Saturday and Sunday and just keep grinding and practicing. And it was really hard to do that. You know, I, you know, me and my dad and I got a lot of fights, but you know, he, he pushed me and, you know, I'm really thankful for that. And I definitely wouldn't be where I am right now without that. What do you, how, where are you hitting them? You're just on a driving range hitting an eight, like a hundred eight irons and then 107 yes. irons. Is that a how, lot of, like, lot how do you irons. not just take the club and just hurl it into a lake? Like after oh, a no, while, the, it, it, I would just imagine it gets so boring. It's it so monotonous. Very, very boring. But like I said, you know, if, if I, if I didn't do that, I, there's no chance I'd be as good of a golfer as I am right now. Not, not a shot. And, you know, I always look back on that. And back then I was like, ah, oh, you know, we, my dad and I would always fight and like, I didn't want to do it. And, you know, I look back on it now and, you know, that's probably the best thing he could have done for me then. Why do you think he did it? Because he obviously didn't do it with your older brother. He didn't even start playing until he was 15. No. So was it because your dad saw something in you? Yeah, I think my, my brother started when he was 15 and, he went down to Florida and, you know, he was pretty good when he was 16. He, he won some state tournament after like maybe seven months of practice. He shot like 75 and, and won something. And then, oh. you know, he thought he was good, which, you know, if you only practice for seven months, shooting 75 is incredible. And uh, he went down to Florida, like played in some tournaments, didn't play well. And, you know, these guys were beating him by like, 15 shots around and kind of realized he wasn't that good. And my dad was like, you know, why, why don't you give it a try? So I decided to give it a try. And, you know, that's why he, you know, he pushed me to my limit and, you know, I'm really thankful for that. How old were you when you broke par for the first time? I want to, I want to say it was 11, 11 or 12 years old. I can't remember exactly, but. And where I are you playing? Seeing, are you playing on the white? Are you playing on the whites? Are you playing on the whites? Are you playing on the tips? Where are you playing when you're when you're that good as a twelve year old? I was playing. I think I was playing like around like six thousand yards, so it was still pretty short. When I was around fourteen, I started to play seven thousand yards, and I think around six thousand yards, I shot seventy one at the local uh, public course, about thirty seconds away from my house up in New Jersey. Oh, okay. All right. That's probably a fun feeling. And a lot of people yeah. watching this or listening to this are probably throwing some middle fingers at you right now that some 12 or 13 year old is shooting under par <laughs> when uh, they can't break, they can't break 90. Um, and so, so you obviously, you worked at it a lot. Do you still now, John Pock, as a 22 year old, go hit 900 balls a weekend? Like what, what do you do now to, to, Stay in rhythm to stay to keep your shots the way you, they need to be to keep your game where it's at. Yeah, nine hundred balls, not a chance. That took me about. I'd get there at like ten in the morning, and leave at seven at night. So I can't do that anymore. <laughs> but now I feel like because of that, I don't have to work on so many things in my game, my swing right now. So it's. You know, my fundamentals are pretty much there, so I don't have to work on it a crazy amount. So, you know, a normal day is probably a five to six hour, uh, probably less now. I, I like to play a lot more, but if I really want to practice for a day, I go out there for five hours and, you know, work on all aspects of my game. Now that I live in Florida, I could go outside and, you know, not have to hit in a, a driving range all day so I can – work on my short game, putting, you know, bunker play and ball striking. And it, it, it you know, I kind of balanced it throughout the whole entire day. So that's kind of what a normal practice day looks for me. But I like to go out and play more and learn how to score. I came up with a theory about you, man. Just So you moved more to Florida to kind of kind on golf. Is that correct? Yes. I'm, I moved when I was 15. Or in high school, I should say. Mm -hmm. Did family come or was it your dad? Just, just my dad. And you homeschooled the time? Did you go to like an IMG? Like, where did you go and finish up high school? So I work with, I, I went to this homeschooling program called uh, Laurel Springs School. And I went to, I lived with my dad. I went to 
I didn't go to a, it's called the David Ledbetter Golf Academy, but it's not like that academy, like IMG, like you just go there for an hour, get a lesson, and then you can leave whenever you want. But I joined this golf course in Orlando and I practiced on my own. And then I probably see my coach once every two weeks and then practice on my own some more. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. But I didn't go to academy. My dad and I just worked together and, you know, kind of did things that way. But it's such a drastic life shift for a teenager, leaving your friends, leaving your everything behind in New Jersey, where you grew up. There's a lot of pressure that comes with that. I bet you feel as a 16 year old, man, I better make this work because this is a big investment that's being made in me. And there's a lot of pressure on me. And my theory is that that's why you're such a good golfer is because you showed early on, you've been handling pressure since you were 15 years old. Is there some <laughs> truth to that? Like there, there's no, a lot that's, of young man to go down and pursue something like this. You're very spot on. My dad, you know, he 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 did a lot of things that try to, you know, put pressure on me. And it was tough as a kid, but I, I look back on it now and he's made me really tough. And I'm I'm so thankful for that because, you know, you see some of these other golfers and, you know, they have all the talent in the world. And sometimes their mentality isn't there to to quite be the best golfer they can be. And you know, it was, a, it was a lot of pressure. My dad, you know, he he sold two of his businesses to to move down to Florida mm. with me, and he invested a lot of money in me. And you know, I um I, I couldn't be more thankful for both my parents, my mom as well, and I have four older siblings, and you know, they all like give me so much support. And yeah, it was it was really tough because you know I, there were times where I was like, man, what if I what if it, I don't make it, you know, my parents spent all this money and, you know, I, I didn't do it, right. but you know, my, my dad, you know, he, he kept telling me when I was younger, he, he always told me I wasn't good enough that I needed to work harder, but it's kind of funny now that I'm at this level, he's like, you're the best golfer in the world. You got everything it takes to be the best. So, you know, he, mm. he kind of, he made me really tough as a kid and now he, he's nothing but supportive and you know it's 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 an interesting way route he took but you know i i have him to thank for for the career i've had so far well it can go both ways right like some kids have dads that are like that and they veer off course and just get so sick of don't want to do it anymore you went the other way obviously now like your dad said best golfer in the world that works out for you but i i did want to ask uh before we get into your actual career Number one, do people on campus know who you are? Do do you get noticed walking around campus? <laughs> uh, there's been a few times, yeah. I actually have. Uh, I was at a basketball game this this earlier this fall or spring, and uh, this guy who's handing out masks up top at the student section, he's like, "You're that guy." I was like, he was like "Excuse me." He's like, "Yeah, you're you're that golfer guy." I was like, "Oh yeah, yeah, that's me." I was like, I was pretty shocked and. You know, it was, it was pretty fun, and, you know, it's it's nice to have that feeling. Not to get too personal, I asked Daniel Berger about this question. And I asked him about the – when he was when he was in your shoes as a junior or so, maybe a sophomore at Florida State, and I asked him about the female attention. Is there <laughs> any of that for a college golfer? I know what it's like. We all know what it's like when they when, when everyone turns pro. Is there any of that? Do you, do you ever feel like a college football player? Do you ever feel like uh, Jordan Travis? I mean, I don't know what their lifestyle is like, but I've heard about it. But I'd like – I'm probably guessing no, but I, I, I have a girlfriend, so I, that's not – Oh, well, there I you go. That's the perfect. Least of my that's not even something you're worried about. <laughs> that's something yeah. you're not even worried about. That's good. That's what – because I remember – I just think – I asked Daniel Berger about this. He was like six in the country when I was talking to him. He's like mm – -hmm. he's like, I, I feel like I'm the best athlete on the campus. And like I got the attention that like the backup – that gets. I'm just wonder about you. It's just funny to think about. You literally might be the best athlete on a campus full of great athletes, but they don't know you like they know some of the other. Are you cool with that? Are you okay kind of not being the spotlight, not shining so bright, even though you're one of the best in the country to do what you do? No, yeah, I, I'm totally okay with that. You know, I, I don't, I mean, it's, it's nice to have that, but I, I don't really care too much for it. You know, I have my friends and family and you know that's those are the people i really care about the most so yeah it doesn't 
doesn't bother me a whole lot. So I wanted to ask you about your U.S. Open experience. But before I do that, I have a girlfriend. I'm terrible at golf. I can't play. It just drives me crazy. But my girlfriend <laughs> started about a year ago when the pandemic started and is becoming pretty good. But all she wants to do is hit the driver. When she goes to the range, that's all she wants to do is hit the driver. What's one piece of advice you would give for a novice golfer, uh, a, a hacker like us, to get better that, that she really needs to concentrate on? Okay, so the biggest thing is you don't score from your driver, you score from your putter. So mm. I think if she wants to work on something, I would say, you know, work on your short game. But and when you're on the range, I always the way I see it is I like to work from, you know, the lower clubs back up. So I do all my you know, drills and certain swing advice my coach gives me with my my wedges and my eye short irons and then I work my way to my driver. So the better iron swing you have, in my opinion, the better drive, better you'll hit your driver. Now going to the U.S. Open, you were the low amateur there. Was it last year? Right? It was last year's. Well, yes, you're the only amateur, ball. right? You're the only one that you're the only one that scored. You're the only one that yes. stuck around for the weekend. Um, mm -hmm. Can you tell me, like, look, man, we know what you are, and we know you are, and you're going to be in these circles for a long time. But was there a Oh my God moment and oh my gosh moment are five of them when you were at the U S open. Like, I can't believe I'm talking to this. I can't believe I'm playing with this guy. I can't believe that's him right there. Like as a golf nerd, which I'm sure you are, you got big golf nerds. You love sport. You, you're, you love those dudes. What was the big, what was the big, Oh my gosh moment? Yeah. So uh, this actually may shock you. I, I'm not a golf nerd. <laughs> You know, my coach always makes fun of me. Oh, good, man, good. That's why you seem so normal. That's why you seem so normal. <laughs> I'm a huge NBA fan and a big NFL guy. I love basketball and football. I tell everyone, if I was six foot five, I'd be playing basketball. But I'm just not blessed with that gene. For you, would it be a bigger deal to be in a twosome with Jordan Spieth or with Steph Curry? <sighs> That's a that's a really tough one. I, but the thing is, my, my favorite athlete of all time is Tiger Woods. But I'm a huge Knicks fan, so okay, I would gotcha. I would kill to have it. Would, it would be awesome to play with any Knicks player. I, I'm just such a I'm a huge fan. I, I just that's that's my favorite team to watch. And but going back to my your original question, I was that wow moment really hit me when. I as soon as I got there because there was never ever a single tournament where I felt like oh my goodness like I walked in there and everything was in perfect shape you know the way they treated you the hospitality you feel like you know you belong there and everyone wants you there and then the second wow moment was I went to the range and my friend has a video of it but I'm hitting next golf balls on the range next to so there's Tiger here and then you got Bryson DeChambeau then me and then Sergio Garcia behind me so I was like <laughs> oh my I you know three major champions all next to me and I was hey. like this can't be real but you know it, it was and it was just super exciting well, so then we won't talk about golf anymore. Where, how, what's the, what's the, uh, and we'll let you go here, John. I really do appreciate this, but where do you think the Knicks can reach this year? You know, obviously, they're not winning the championship. I'm sure you think they might, but they're not. You know that. But as <laughs> no, a kid that's I, grown up a Knicks fan who's never seen any success at all, like they haven't done any live almost. How excited has this season been for you? When we went on that nine game winning streak, I was I was super pumped. I, I you know I always post stuff on my Instagram story. I'm I'm always I've actually never been to a New York Knicks game because we've never been good enough, and I didn't want to spend the money to to watch us lose. So I've I've never experienced that. But, um, it's just so hard. I don't like going to New York City, <laughs> but. It's been so much fun to watch them. And, mm. you know, I just – I think I think they'll win. You know, they're the four seed right now. I think the five seed's Atlanta. I think we can beat Atlanta in the series. But then those top three teams and obviously Brooklyn, M Milwaukee, and the Sixers, I just – I don't see us having any chance against them. But, you know, you, you never know. You never know. <laughs> 
hey, Julius could go for 40 and 15 every night. Like, and, and so I grew up in Atlanta, so I'm a Hawks fan. And I, I'm oh, like the Hawks. Oh, They've been a, <laughs> no, it's okay, man. You don't have to I'm, I'm like, I'm a realist. I know they're not winning a championship. I, I just mm -hmm. want them to get these young guys to get some playoff experience. So maybe two years down the road, it'll help them. And I assume yeah. you might be that way with the Knicks. Like, okay, you're not, you're not beating top three teams, and you're certainly not beating whoever comes out of the West. Mm -hmm. Just playoff experience under your belt. That's a big deal. Experience in life, experience at the U.S. Open for you is a big deal moving forward, right? Yeah, very true. Yeah, I totally agree with that. We got some young guys on the team as well, like R.J. Mitchell. I hope he comes back healthy. But yeah, that that experience for them and the you know, you know, playoffs is going to be huge. I, I felt like I learned so much at the Open. You know, I went to multiple guys out there and asked them. Just a very simple question. I introduced myself and said, "Hey, this is my first PGA Tour event and first major. Like, I'm, I'm lost, but what's some advice you can give me?" And you know, I went up to like four or five guys, and they were all very welcoming. And you know, they just told me, you know, they just gave me their best advice, and I thought I was super thankful for that. Well, John, last question. I want to wrap with this. Uh, Florida State's been one of the top programs in the country for years. Trey has done a fantastic job. Uh, there's one thing that's pretty elusive, though, that hasn't come. Um, what would it mean? And I know there are things to think about before that. And you got to at least get out of the which announced, you know, on on uh, on Wednesday that your guys are at the Seminole. What would mm -hmm. it mean to get that national championship for Florida State and for Trey? What I mean, I, I know that's your goal. Just what would that mean for you? You know, I it would mean the world to me. I that was. You know, I came here in 2017 and, you know, I I wanted to do this for Florida State. You know, I've, I feel like I owe it to them. Like, I, I just – I've grown so much here and, you know, I, I love this school so much. And, you know, I, I want to do it for my teammates, you know, my family and, and especially Coach Jones. He's, he's given me so many great opportunities here. And, you know, I feel like I've gotten so much better here and I can thank him for that. So – you know, I feel like to bring a national championship to Florida State, you know, it would really kind of solidify what Trey has done and, you know, prove everyone that, you know, we're we're a legit golfing school and that, you know, you come here to win championships. And, you know, I feel like we've got the team to do that this year. And if we just play like, you know, if we just keep doing what we're doing and, you know, play good golf and work hard and, keep a great mindset. I think, you know, we're, we're going to be really hard to beat. Well, John, obviously good luck with that. Uh, good luck this summer with the Knicks. I hope they, I hope they win you some games, buddy. I hope you get to see some playoff wins. That would be awesome. And thank you so much for spending some time with us, man. Yeah. Thank you so much, Corey. Really enjoyed it.